It's the car cast. Let's talk about eight questions. Let's drive. Get down. I've talked about it before. Matter of fact, I've mentioned Marketing Myopia. If you haven't read Marketing Myopia, you should go do that, okay? Reminder, some homework from the car cast. Don't just sit here and enjoy the friendly banter that we have on the ride, but put things into place. First, action and piece of homework today is go read Marketing Myopia. You'll be glad you did. There are eight questions we need to ask of ourselves in order to know, truly, do we understand our buyers? And look, let, let, me, let me frame this a little bit. If you're transactional, if you've got a, a consumer product, this might not be as applicable. I don't really know that it is or is not, but it might not be. I do know very clearly that in the B2B sales cycle, that's at least six to eight weeks plus, these questions are going to make a big difference. And if you ask them of yourselves, you're going to come out on the end knowing, hey, do I really know my customer or not? So what are they? Well, let's go ahead and jump into them. The first question is, who is the main consumer or user of your product or service? Actually the person that is using or consuming the service. Now, tricky because it might not be the person that bought the software or signed the contract. So you need to find that out and to figure it out. Who is the person or persons within the organization that's actually using the product or the service? The second question is, who is that person's boss? Who do they report to? Now, we're doing two things here. One, we want to understand where in the organization they sit, which functional area. But we also want to start to map out the organizational structure. Look, if your deal cycles are nine plus weeks or longer, okay, six to nine plus there's some complexity involved in that deal and there's likely going to be multiple buyers. You can't understand where those multiple buyers reside unless you understand the organizational structure. That is your second question. The third is who is their boss's boss? Okay, same thing. We want to keep going up that hierarchical chain. It does two things. One, it helps us understand the path to the CEO. And let's assume that you're, look, if you're selling a, a credit card type of transaction that's $500 a year, that's probably a little bit different. But once you get into the tens of thousands of dollar range, okay, whether it's a subscription annual recurring model or whatever it might be, rarely does somebody at a functional level have that authority. It ultimately always goes up through the CFO and most times the CEO is going to have their eyes on a transaction of that size given, you know, it varies depending upon the size of the business. So we want to keep asking you who is their boss's boss until we get to the top. The fourth question is, is there anyone in the organization whose job it is and their main job is to support the user of your product or service. Now, what does that mean? What that means is we're trying to uncover shared service models. We care about shared service model because the person in the shared service, its job it is to support the person that's using your product or service is typically one you want to win over as a fan. Okay, so that's a, a tactical kind of how do I triangulate my buyers so they get the right people on my side. Fifth question is, what is the honest to goodness technical implications of what you're selling? At just about everything, whether it's pure service or pure product, has some kind of technical impact. You know, years ago, the technology impact used to be the most important thing. Today, it's not as most important, but it certainly is important. You want to understand the propensity for what they care about technically. Frequently, it's going to uh, it's going to be relegated down to security issues and accessibility, things like that, mobility. But you want to understand what those issues are and who in the organization cares about those issues. The sixth question you want to ask is what are the big bucket strategy issues that are on the table that impact the direct user of the product and who their boss is? In other words, in that functional area, how do they think about the big strategy items and how do they see their efforts mapping back to those big strategy items? Now we're getting into an area where we're able to impact what they professionally care about, the difference that they're able to make at a very, at a very discreet level and the front lines or at the managerial level. Seventh question you want to ask is, do we understand the three to five major market concerns of leadership? Let's say they're um, retail. And right now I'm filming this in November of 2017. We're approaching holiday season. Holiday season means retail articles, okay? Retail articles means an examination of how retail is under the gun by online commerce. And that disruption has been going on for years and it's accelerating. It's not going to get any better. So if I'm a leader in a retail organization, you could bet your bottom dollar that I care very much about this holiday season. And I care very much how we're performing against our pure e-commerce players and how we're integrating e-commerce to handle that disruption. So that's an example. That leadership is thinking about that and good leaders make sure all their direct reports are thinking about that. So there's three, at least three of them. What are they? Ask the question, do you know that or do you not? If you don't, good place to start and maybe to say to yourself, we don't know our customers nearly as much as we thought we did. Last and potentially the most important, and you want to get to this question all the time, 
Do you know what your customers, customers care about? Do you? Do you really truly know? If you don't, then you're only telling half the story. You want to tell the full story. Why? What you do and what you're selling is go why is that going to make lives better, not just for the person you're selling it to, but also for the customer that your customer is serving. There you have it. Eight questions. Ask them. Ask those questions. Do yourself a favor and ask those questions. You're going to be surprised at what you don't know. And you're going to be surprised at the actions that you'll see that are easy to take and will have immediate impact. See you next time. I like it. I like, I like the vibe of the car cast today because it's viscerally applicable. Because these are real things and I hope you got it. More importantly, I hope you join me on future rides. And you can't do that unless you're with me over on YouTube. So come on over, join me on YouTube, and I will see you next time.